Okay, so we, we are talking to Professor Olabayo Kungle, who is actually based in Nigeria and works for um, the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development. Tell us a little bit about this institute, Prof. Okay, before I do that, let me commend you, David, for getting the pronunciation of my name right. Some Nigerians don't even get it right. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've not been to Nigeria, but I would really love to come. I have a lot of Nigerian friends. So, Oh, I'm embarrassed on your behalf. How can you not have come to Nigeria? Come. You see, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look forward to that. <laughs> we'll I need to put on my this. calendar and come. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get you there. So, okay. um, Nightbridge, the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, was established or actually took off around 1989. That makes it about. Um, 34, can't remember now, about mm -hmm. 34 years, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. It was primarily set up as a response to the poor ability of the pharmaceutical manufacturing industry in Nigeria at that time, and um, well, still applies largely now, to conduct drug development R&D. Their, their, their capacity to do, to do drug development was limited. And of course, looking at the history and evolution of the pharmaceutical industry in Africa and in most of the developing world, those companies started mostly as compounding organizations. So they were not going to start from, AP, from A to Z. Mm -hmm. Raw material was going to come and they were just finishing. So um, the government of Nigeria felt that you could have an institution that will provide the R&D support for the local manufacturing industry. So NIPRID was supposed to stand between the desktop uh, lab bench research going on in the universities especially, and the industry that, will, that could and would need to utilize the outcome of such research. So it was a bridging mechanism. And it turned out, that when it took off, because of practical reasons, it, it kind of went for what was most abundantly available and where the country could have a strategic advantage. And that was herbal medicines. So okay. strictly speaking, NIPRI was not set up to address only herbal medicines. It was to address the R&D needs, especially the D needs, development needs of the yeah. pharmaceutical industry. But okay. for practical reasons and practical purposes, it became imperative to start with herbal medicines. And in the course of that, it has established a fantastic reputation and um, resource and capacity in the, in the in R and D yeah. of herbal medicines. Yeah. And it happened to be slightly ahead of the curve so that as the rest of the region as the rest of the world got more and more interested in herbal medicine, NIPRI was already there and became one of those institutions that provided strong support for the development of herbal medicines. So historically, that is where NIPRI um, was coming from. And over time, it has had the, the good, uh, the opportunity to develop a number of medicines that are used around us. One of the models that NIPRI also chose to use was to start from known. Instead of now going and um, doing the, the basics, which usually will take time, one model NIPRI devised was, first of all, put science into as is. That is, you met herbal medicine this way. It is being used for this purpose. Just confirm that the purpose is correct. It is safe. And move it on 
apply your pharmaceutical processes to it. People like me, rather than wait till the end as a drug formulation expert, typically we will be waiting till the end of the whole science. We joined very early. We are part of the development process because we received an existing herbal medicine. And so we are working on it from both ends. The formulation man is already looking at it. The pharmacology guy is looking at it. And we can get something out to the people to improve what they already know. While we then go back in our labs, the lab guys are doing raw science to improve the the, the, either the okay, so it's a parallel, the it's a parallel yeah. process. Okay. That's what that's the model that Nightbreed has used, which which helps to hasten the process. And they also help to build confidence in the populace. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you hold these products for too long, then people lose confidence and begin to think you are fiddly, you are trying to do something funny. Yeah. So when you're able to move it forward, you gain their support for the research you wish to do as a scientist. Okay, that's great. So um, what have been some of the successes maybe, and then we can talk about the challenges that, that, you know, that you've had? Well, I'm sure in the whole world, at a point, I think our nickname was Night Prison. So I think uh, I better just get that out of the way very quickly. Yeah, Night Prison, yeah. which is um, herbal medicine for sickle cell, is is the is our number one success story and i guess it has become a model for several other research institutions in africa uh, we did not discover niprisan mm -hmm. it was already it was already used in some form by a traditional medicine practitioner now when you say a traditional medicine practitioner the mind of the average person goes to one guy in a dark room wearing some dirty clothes and stuff, maybe. But that was not the mm -hmm. kind of person we were dealing with there. This was a man, he's long gone now, elderly at that time, with an MBA from the US, a, 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 a pastor, you know, well-educated, well-read. So he had yeah. this he was using. And then somehow it came to our notice, we collaborated. Yes, we added, I mean, we improved the product, but I like to always make it clear that the first useful information came from a traditional medicine practitioner. And that made it, so together, in the initial, we worked together. He gave us information, he gave us the starting materials, and then we did what I would call polishing to arrive where we are, clinical trials. Yes, we actually subjected it to clinical trials. And okay. today, when I hear people do clinical trials, they are ready to do clinical trials on herbal medicine. It's so exciting because when we wanted to do this, we could hardly find medical practitioners who are ready to do clinical trials on herbal mm -hmm. medicines. So we, we kind of broke the mold in that respect. Eventually we got some to cooperate with us. We designed the study. Um, papers have been written on the studies, have been written on the challenges and stuff. But because we tried it properly, we had a cohort of people who used it and we, we, we could document their response to it. We, the science of it, the clinical trial, the, 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 the manufacturing became a model that we could set. Even the drug regulatory agency in Nigeria was growing with us as we were developing this because there were no okay. rules in place at that time, mm -hmm. nobody had tried these things with herbal medicine. And then I guess the exceptional thing we did there was not to allow the product to stay on our shelf. We are a government agency. And so sometimes the kind of funding you need for commercialization, you wouldn't get. Um, even the capacity for commercialization, and that's something that we all need to watch out for. A good scientist is not a good businessman necessarily. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Our, our research organizations, our universities are not set up primarily to do business. So that's one of the things we achieved. Um, some leaderships at each time in the life of NIPRI came up with the right attitude and we called in the private sector. Look, we have this, we've gone this far. It would be good business for you if you took a look at it. And so yeah. that was the commercialization model that was used uh, to license give the license to a manufacturer. And that was why uh, Naprisan was able to go as far as he did. 
Okay, so maybe for those people watching and wondering, what are we talking about, uh, Naipresan? Because also in other parts of the world, we don't really have, uh, you know, high prevalence of sickle cell anemia. So maybe just tell us a little bit about what Naipresan does, and also the fact that I think it was the first, it's probably the only African manufactured product, which is actually registered in the US, right? As an orphan drug. Yeah, maybe just give us a little bit more background about Nipresin. Okay, I mean, that's good because fortunately I was, um, I was project manager for that. So I was coordinating the research, especially towards the end. So I have, first time, Nipresin is uh, a recipe from plants, mostly food plants that is used in the management, again, management now of sickle cell disease. They, in all the studies and trials we did, the outcome we were looking for was reduction in the frequency of what is called crisis, painful crisis. Uh, mm -hmm. For those who have sickle cell, sometimes blood occlusion, um, blood, whatever it is, um, short supply of blood to some parts due to blockage, shortage of oxygen results in a lot of pain. And that's what you call the crisis that sends these people to the hospital, sometimes as frequently as every month, sometimes every two months for children, they miss school, for those who mm -hmm. work, they can't go to work and all the other consequences of not being able to engage in both educational and uh, economic activities. So the outcome for the trials was to reduce the number of those crises reduce hospitalization. And so um, in the studies indicated that it could do this. And so I remember when we were recruiting, if we were not getting frequent crisis, and I think the frequency I can't remember now, I think it's something around, if we were getting anything less than three, four of those kind of hospitalizations a year, mm -hmm. you are not qualified for our study. So Nipresan is something that we ask people to take regularly daily it's not it's not very useful when you are already down and ill so it's mm -hmm. actually um, what you use as a prophylaxis or you continue to use to prevent the crisis from coming so that's what a uh, nipresan is and uh, that's what it okay. is on the market for right now okay so so where are we now is it available to members of the public because i get those questions especially you know, to for people who are out here. Yes, uh, so um, probably maybe actually used to pro to provide some. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, it's another. I would love someday to be able to discuss the challenges you have in the commercialization process. So we did have challenges. So the first company that was asked to commercialize that came up after a year or so. It had put it in the market. It had a trade name, but that company had its own financial issues. So Nipreet mm -hmm. had to take back the license. But about um, four or five years ago, we have reissued the license to a Nigerian uh, company. And that company presently is manufacturing and it is available in the Nigerian, uh, it's available in the market. I don't know if they have uh, gone beyond Nigeria, but if you walked into a pharmacy in Nigeria, you can get Nipresan. It has a trade name, I can't remember. Okay, no, then that's that's fantastic. Um, any other interesting products that you, what's the most interesting product apart from Nipresan you've worked on? <laughs> Let's put it down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For me, it's Nipresan, Nipresan, Nipresan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but of course, of course, we've also worked on a number of, um, we have some anti-malarial, we've looked at anti-malarials, we've looked at um, antifungal preparations, we've also uh, looked at something for diabetes, uh, but like I said earlier, um, these ones have not, they didn't go as far, they've not penetrated commercially, as much as nine percent because of the handicaps of uh, funding, and uh, because sickle cell is a kind of um, niche disease, and um, there was also no 
there mm. wasn't much alternative. Competition, yeah. It was attractive to business. Mm. Now you are developing some anti-malaria, which yes, could be safer than synthetics, but mm. maybe it's not working as quickly as usually with herbal medicines. Um, you you find people, uh, they, they, some companies, for example, have been in discussion with us for six, seven years on the anti-malaria. So we do have other products, but they have not made as much um, commercial progress as we okay. were able to do with Niprisan. All right, I think we, we are kind of coming to an end now um, and maybe just a few questions. So when you look back over the, the 40 years in, in your career, what have been the highlights of, of it? One is the, like I said earlier, I'm glad that we can tell manufacturers, we can tell the world, we can tell anybody, you can mm -hmm. use raw materials from here in, mm -hmm. in pharmaceutical mm -hmm. preparations. There's no magic about, oh, it's not pharmaceutical grade. We know what it means. We can get it to that level. That's one mm -hmm. for me. Two mm -hmm. is what we have been able to do with herbal medicines. Um, when you look back 30, 35, 40 years ago, we've come a long way in getting, I'm trying not to use the word, but I think that's what jumps to my mind, mainstreaming herbal medicines. When it comes mm -hmm. to use and policy, it is not yet mainstream. But when it comes to the world of research, it's not, mm -hmm. you are not looked down upon anymore when you say, look, let's take a look at this herbal medicine. Yes. I think mm -hmm. that is a major step we have taken. And um, it was a, comp it's, I believe we were in a competition with time and environmental degradation. I think we've done a fairly good job of documenting traditional medicine practices and also at least there are all kinds of publications and documentation on which plant and what plant can do this and that. At least it's there. Even if eventually we lose the plants, we know what they can do and we can apply science to bring them back in one form or the other. Um, again, too, we have trained people. When I look back at how many people we have trained, I have been opportunity to train and who are doing very well in the area of not just traditional medicine, not just herbal medicine, but in the area of pharmaceutical development, is, yeah. one is very excited, uh, typical of a teacher. You are glad to see that you have replicated yourself. Okay, that's great. So tell me something. Um, what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say you're, you're 15 again, you're 20 again. <laughs> well, what, what would you tell your, your younger self? Yeah, um, we, I, would have, I would say more confidence. More, I think we stayed too long trying to do it the British way, the American way. Mm -hmm. we, we needed to have um, been a little more of rebels earlier mm -hmm. so that um, we configure the space in which we operate to suit ourselves. Uh, so for those of us who got into where we got to, there was a lot of time spent on what was not really directly relevant to us mm -hmm. and to our people. So I would say, yeah. oh, Kunle, get on with it quickly. Oh, but it's not going to be popular. Don't worry, get on with it. It will be useful to your people. That's the message mm -hmm. I would like to tell to my, I would have told myself now, if I had the opportunity, and I guess I would say it to anybody now, you are smart, to you are intelligent, you have yes. get on with it in a way that benefits your people, play to your strength. Just do it. Yes. In other words, yeah. Okay. Well, that's a very um, good point at which we can end the conversation. Um, thank you very much, uh, Prof Kunle, and I think you've had an illustrious career and it's still going on and I wish you all the best. I'm hoping that we can collaborate because I also have that interest now in, in inactives. I think sometimes we spend too much time talking about how we can synthesize APIs. And yet um, I think Africa is rich and has all these kind of things that we should not be importing. Yeah. So and and thank you for 
the lessons that you've shared with us from your younger years, uh, career shaping advice that you've given, and then of course the great success that you've had with Niprisan, historical, yeah. and hopefully that that success will will be replicated, right? And then Niprisan can be available to all those that that need it. All right. So thank, thank you very you. much, David, and thanks for indulging me in one of my passions, writing and talking. <laughs> so.